Welcome back with a smiling face. Links to previous episodes are given in the video description, so don't forget to like, subscribe and share the video. Shadows of the Moon Episode 11 Chapter 109 Kiera the evening had passed in merriment, with the hustle and bustle of children playing and laughing, adults teasing and chatting, and the warmth of a pleasant night hung in the air. It was now finally time for them to take their oaths. Mum and Dad were on the stage, with Liam, Raven and Damon now making their way onto the stage. Looking at them on either side of Raven. I wondered what if things had been different, Damon would have still been an alpha, but it seemed he didn't need a mate to get that title, he was meant to be one. Can't stand the ER. Alejandro's voice came through the link. I raised an eyebrow. I thought you'd be over that by now, I questioned, caressing the back of his neck as I kissed his cheek. Once a ER always a ER, but I guess he deserves the title, he was a good beta when Liam was on his training. I smiled slightly and nodded. Yes, he was. I'm glad you see that. I replied turning my attention back to the trio. Of course I do. Amor Mio, but that doesn't mean I have to like him. He wrapped his arms around me and I leaned into him, life with Alejandro was perfect. I glanced over at the far side where the children were playing, with the Omegas minding them and their own set of guards standing around. My little angels. He kissed my shoulder before we looked towards Dad who was now beginning on the oath. Damon would become Alpha first as Dad would be handing him the honorary title of Alpha before Liam can take over from him. Dad looked a lot better, he like the rest of us was becoming accustomed with Raphael's passing. Gone but never ever forgotten. I placed my hand on top of Alejandro's, my heart racing as she kissed my neck. You okay? Yes. I whispered, turning and kissing his lips. I... Alpha Elijah Westwood, honor you Damon Nicholson, with the title of Alpha of the Blue Moon Pack, under the full moon and by Selene's blessings. Do you accept this position? Dad asked, authority clear in his voice, his piercing eyes on Damon. I, Damon Nicholson, accept the title of Alpha of the Blue Moon Pack, giving my oath that it will always be united with the Blood Moon Pack and to respect and honor this oath. Damon's reply came. Do you vow to protect, serve and lead the pack to the best of your abilities? I do. Both men sliced their hands before shaking hands and sealing the pact, I felt the shift of power slightly. Liam was actually sharing the alpha power that he would have inherited from dad with Damon, and I had to say I was proud of him. He had made mistakes, but he had redeemed himself. I present to you, Alpha Damon of the Blue Moon Pack. Dad said as he hugged Damon, and everyone clapped and cheered. Liam Damon turned and hugged me. I slapped his back, it was going to be hard, no longer able to link him anymore. Phones, brother. Damon said as if guessing what was on my mind. I raised an eyebrow. Yeah, phones. I agreed. He looked at me with his smile fading. Thank you. Don't. I shook my head, giving him a small smile, stepping back and allowing Raven to hug him. Congratulations. I am going to still call you Damon. She stated, making Damon chuckle. Of course, Tiny Luna. He teased before we turned to Dad once more. Ready. He said to me. I nodded, this time. I won't this up. Westwood, to be bound by oath to serve, protect and lead this pack from here onwards to the best of your capabilities. Dad said, his eyes met mine and I saw the confidence in them, one that had been slightly amiss the last time I took this oath. I, Liam Westwood, accept the position of Alpha of the Blood Moon Pack, to honor serve and protect this pack to the best of my abilities. 
Dad sliced his hand before passing me the knife. I cut a deep gash, shaking quickly as it healed incredibly fast. I felt the power of the Alpha title course through me, the murmur of the pack congratulating me through the link and the position of Alpha falling back into place. By the goddess herself, I promise to always protect my people. I looked down at my little bite-sized Luna, knowing that the power of her title had shifted to her already. I took her hands, kissing her knuckles softly. Do you, Raven Jacobs, accept the position of my Luna, to always stand by my side as my mate and Luna of the Blood Moon Pack? I asked, my eyes staring into her unique ones. I do. She replied softly. Everyone clapped and cheered, before Dad looked to the crowds. I give to you, the Alpha and Luna of the Blood Moon Pack. Everyone cheered and clapped. I scanned the crowd, seeing Kia and Alejandro. Zach, Taylor, Auntie Monica, Robin, Azura, Damon. Mom and Dad. I made it, with the help of all those around me. They brought me out of the darkness. I looked back down at my beautiful mate, my heart racing as I cupped her face, the sparks whispering along my skin. And of course, her along live the Dimos line. Someone called out just as I pulled Raven close, kissing her passionately. Igniting a storm of never-ending love and need for the woman in my arms. My world. My dream. My all mine. I pulled Raven away from the dance floor. It had been far too long and I wanted to go for a run. Is it okay for the Alpha and Luna to leave? She giggled, as we stripped our clothes when we reached the thickest of the woods, far away from the party. Yeah, perfectly fine. I'm Alpha so my rules. I winked at her, my eyes on her body. Under the moonlight, she wash glowing. My D, CK twitched and I shifted before I ended up pinning her against the tree right here, I knew for a fact that Alejandro would hear us. She shifted into her dark grey and black wolf, it was beautiful with her unique glowing eyes. She trotted over to me, nudging me with her snout. I was a lot bigger than her, with my light grey fur complementing perfectly with hers. You are beautiful regardless of what form you are in. Thanks, you too. She giggled as she ran off, and I fell into a run beside her. Beautiful. I growled, nudging her playfully. Yes, or do you prefer pretty? At least I'm not tiny. I teased licking her. Her giggle came through the mind link as we kept running faster and faster away from the pack. Definitely not tiny. Our eyes met, and I nuzzled against her. Besides, I may be tiny, but I'm strong. She said before she pounced, knocking me off my feet. She was definitely fast and nimble, I chuckled as we went rolling down the slope, her on top of me. See. She remarked, staring down at me. Shift. I commanded, my heart thudding. I wanted her. Her eyes widened as she shifted back, breathing heavily. Just the way she looked. I shifted too, sitting up and wrapping my arms around a naked raven. She bit her lip, realizing my heart on was rubbing against her. My eyes feasted on her smooth skin and I ran my hands down her BR3ASTS slowly. Her breath hitched when my fingers grazed her hardened buds. A work of art. Perfection. I growled. I grabbed her BR3AST, biting down gently on her NE and making her whimper in pleasure. The scent of her arousal clung to the air, a fragrance that I was addicted to. Out here. She whispered, despite her nails scraping down my chest. No one's around. I replied huskily, before I pulled her clothes. My lips crashed against hers hungrily and at the same time I entered her. She cried out, 
before she began bouncing on my lap as she rode me. I grabbed her hips, slamming her down onto my DK, her hard and fast. She yanked my hair, twisting her fingers into it as her lips met mine once more. Her chest pressed to mine as I her, pleasure drowning me and I embraced it. We came simultaneously, our release throwing us off the edge into pure bliss, our M0ANS of pleasure sinking, the perfect music to my ears. I love you. She whispered through the link, breathing hard. I love you always. I replied, you are my world. Under the moonlight I kissed her once more, letting my emotions flow through the bond. I could feel hers, her love, her happiness, her contentment. Chapter 110 Damon It had been a few weeks since I had become Alpha, and although we were now two packs, we were still all over the place as there was still some stuff left to set up in my pack. My pack. It still felt surreal to say that. It was the night of the blood moon, and we were all over at the Westwoods. Auntie and uncle were leaving tomorrow for their six-week holiday and would be back just before Kiara's wedding. A holiday Liam had really pushed them into agreeing to. Auntie Red had been a little worried about Azura, but with everyone reassuring them, they were doing this, and they really needed it. Careful with the glasses, Zuzu. Raven was saying, looking at Azura who was balancing four glasses in her arms. She looked as beautiful as ever, yet there was no ache in my chest when I looked at her. It kind of felt weird that I ever had feelings for her. Yes, I still loved her, but definitely just as a friend. Did she wash her hands? Liam asked. We am, I don't pick my boogers anymore. She frowned. Still. Smiled, I'm sure by the time uncle and auntie returned, Liam was going to have her completely changed into a hygiene freak. It's only glasses, Liam. Uncle L frowned at him. I fear for Azura when you leave. Mama said, smiling slightly. Don't worry, I'll take good care of her and spank Liam's BT if he is mean to her. Raven chimed in. Or I'll spank yours. Liam shot back with a smirk and a wink at Raven. Mama and Auntie Red chuckled. I'd say something, but I don't want to make him cringe. Auntie Red teased. Zuzu already told us about Uncle El's kink, or is it yours? Remember at that dinner ages ago? Raven giggled, making Mama and Auntie Red laugh despite the light blush on their cheeks. I exchanged looks with Liam. We so didn't need to know that. As for Mama, she had done a complete turnaround. She was herself, and despite the pain in her eyes that often surfaced, she had been able to accept it. To be honest, I couldn't be thanked for it, Auntie Red, Robin, Raven, and Channing were the reason. Speaking of Channing, I saw him and Mama spending a lot of time together. I saw how they texted, laughed, and even flirted. Although Mom was ten years his senior, if they were happy what more could I ask for? And when she had told me he would be joining us tonight? Well, that was all the confirmation I needed. The door went and Mama looked up. I'll get it. I saw Auntie Red smile and nod before she looked at me. I gave her a smile. Things have changed over the last year, but for the better. She came over and wrapped her arms around me. You are incredible. She said, kissing me on my cheek. Thank you auntie, so are you. It's thanks to you mom got to where she is now. I replied quietly. No, everyone contributed, but above all, it was her own strength and the fact that she had a son as amazing as you by her side. If you two are done, shall we get to the dining room? Uncle L remarked, a small frown on his face. Smiled, the man got jealous so fast. I wrapped my arms around onto tighter, I don't want to let go. I teased, he shook his head, 
leaving the room as Auntie Red smirked asterisk typical Elijah. She said, letting go of me. We both picked up the last two trays, leaving the kitchen and entering the dining room. Hey, Damon. Channing gave me a wave. Hey, I replied. He was my beta but he may just be my mama's boyfriend soon too. That was a tad awkward, but hey this entire room was an interesting bunch. Sit down. Liam said to me, motioning to the seat next to him. I nodded, dropping down onto my seat. Yeah, things were back to normal between us and it felt great. We all began eating as everyone chatted and I turned to the window, staring at the moon. Tonight I felt a little restless whenever I glanced at it. The food is amazing, Luna Scarlet. Channing complimented. Thank you, but please call me Scarlet. Auntie Red said glancing at Azura who sat by Raven. I really wanted these two to have pups of their own, because as much as I'll enjoy being that cool uncle, I would also enjoy seeing Liam getting stressed out. So. When are you having pups? I asked quietly. Let me enjoy a few years with my mate. He replied, glancing over at Azura. Besides, we have Azura, she's enough. I smirked. Ah, I can't wait for you to be a stressed out dad. Evil much. I will enjoy your suffering. We smiled at each other, before returning to our food. Liam pulling Raven close and kissing her. My mind wandered into its own thoughts. Would I ever find someone to call my own? I did want someone by my side, but as much as a certain someone came to my mind, I knew she had a mate out there and I needed to get rid of any feelings as I did with Raven. Dinner was over and Mom had said she would head home a little later, so I had left. With the passing of the night and the moon rising to its fullest in the sky, my restlessness was far too much for me to shake it off. Liam and Raven had vanished for a bit during dinner, I swear those two were as bad as the previous alpha couple. We all knew what they were probably doing but when Azura kept insisting to go find them, Aunt Scarlet tried to keep her occupied. All I could say was good luck to the two of them for the next six weeks. I myself decided to go for a walk, or maybe I'd go for a run if need be, I just needed this feeling to go away or I won't get any sleep at night. I entered the woods, walking into the thickest parts of it, away from both pack grounds and following the sound of the gushing river soothing me slightly. I was just going where my wolf was pushing me, he was far too on edge. Was everything okay? I walked further in the moon almost masked by the thick trees above when I smelt it. A deep delicious tempting scent that made my heart pound, my eyes flashing brightly. My wolf's excitement grew within me. I didn't need to be told to know what this was. It rivaled ravens up until we rejected one another. I broke into a run, the thundering of my heart loud in my ears and my feet barely hitting the ground as I sped up. It was then I saw a flash of movement, a wolf running in the trees, but, it was running away from me. No. Come back. Robin. Another blood moon and I had stayed holed away in my room, until Michaela, one of the girls, asked me if I could drop something off to her parents because she wasn't feeling great herself. She looked like death to be honest, so I had agreed. But it was when I had been heading back to the pack when the most intoxicating scent that I had ever smelled hit my nose, familiar yet so different. Spiced cinnamon, fresh rain, and something so tantalizing that my stomach nodded. It was so intense that I couldn't even focus on pinpointing it. Mate. My mate was here. My heart thundered, fear consuming me, so I turned and ran as fast as I could. I wasn't ready. Goddess, I wasn't ready. Why now? I'm not ready for a mate. I'm still in love with someone else. I shifted, although my mind was screaming that my torn clothes would give away my identity, but I wasn't able to think. 
The only thing I knew was to get away from it, all despite my wolf howling at me to stop. Stop! A voice growled and I skidded to a stop as someone jumped in front of me, his eyes blazing pale green. Our eyes met, the mate bond pulling taut between us, but it was who the man before me was that shook me to my core. My mate was... Robin. He whispered hoarsely. I inched backwards, my heart thundering. How was this possible? How, my eyes stung and I frowned, if the goddess was playing a joke on me Robin, shift. He said softly, peeling his white tee from his chiseled body. He had gotten even bulkier lately. He stepped closer, his scent wrapping around me. My heart was thundering but I did as he said his eyes locked with mine as he pulled his shirt over my head. His knuckles brushed my cheek and the strong current of sparks made my stomach flutter. My eyes met his, they were still pale green and I could hear his heart racing. Why did you run? He whispered, stepping closer. I stepped back, trying not to look at those gorgeous lips of his. Because. I didn't want to find my mate. I said defiantly, staring into his eyes. His eyes returned to the powdery blue I love so much, despite his heart still beating fast. Why not? He asked softly, cupping my face, and those sparks that I dreamt of coursed through me, making me gasp. Because, our eyes met and I knew he knew why. The guilt in his eyes spoke loud enough. I told you I still cared for you. We had a connection, Robin. Even though I had a mate, I was able to be with you in her absence. He whispered softly. Surely that stands for something. I tensed, realizing what he had just said. Even if I wasn't proud of it, he had been able to have a relationship with me, meaning there was something between us without this bond. I knew for me this was a dream come true to be with the man that I love, but what did he want, what if he just... What do you want to do? I asked, trying to remain strong, despite how intense my emotions were right now. To kiss you. He replied quietly, his gaze dipping to my lips and his eyes darkening. My eyes widened, my stomach nodding at those words, and I licked my lips just before his were on mine. Gasped my entire body tingling as my stomach somersaulted. The feel of his plush lips against mine, care asterisking my own, kissing me with a hunger that was a thousand times more intense than ever. His arms wrap around my waist, the other tangling into my hair and I couldn't help but wrap my arms around his neck, kissing him back. Was this really happening, or would a wake-up call tomorrow take it all away? He tensed, Moving back, his hands going to my face as I realized there was already a stray tear trickling down my cheek. Rin, that name. That name. I don't trust this. I whispered, pulling away. Tomorrow you might realize that I'm not who you want. I stepped back, shaking my head, about to run off when he grabbed my wrist and pulled me back into his arms. My back hit his chest and he wrapped his arms around me tightly. Then, explain to me why more than a year on, you're the only woman I see as more than just a woman. Chapter 111 I felt as if the moon goddess truly wanted me to be happy. The one woman who treated me as her number one. The one woman that I still thought of yet didn't dare approach, knowing that she still loved me. I figured that out the other night when Liam had told her she couldn't be Delta, and as much as I had felt something for her, I didn't want to hurt her knowing her mate was out there and I didn't deserve her. But. I was her mate, she was my second chance and I was not going to let it slip away. I don't trust this. Her vulnerable whisper made my heart ache. Then, explain to me why, more than a year on. You're the only woman I see as more as just a woman. I murmured, kissing her neck, her tempting fresh citrus scent making my head go light. 
Let me show you what you mean to me, her heart was racing, her BR3ASTS straining against my t-shirt were heaving, and the shape of her N, pulls made my D, CK twitch. How? She asked curtly, despite how her body was reacting to my touch I let go of her, turning her in my hold and looked into those gorgeous orbs of hers. Claim me as yours. Mark me. Let me mark you. I swear I won't ever let you be unhappy again. I'll never let you go. I whispered, cupping her gorgeous face. Her heart thundered and I knew she was considering it. I arched my neck to her, waiting for her move, but after a moment she shook her head instead. She cupped my face, her deep chocolate eyes filled with raw emotion. Just promise to always be mine. I promise, I'm yours, only yours. And I meant it, I meant every word of it. When she nodded, a soft smile crossing her lips, I knew we were going to be okay. As one, we moved closer, our lips meeting once more. I pulled her body fully against mine, not caring that she could probably feel my heart on. I wanted her and I wasn't going to hide that. She was mine and I was going to cherish her forever. We somehow made it back to Blue Moon territory and into my apartment, where the smell of new furniture and paint still clung to the air. I kicked the door shut behind me, pushing her up against the door, our hearts thudding I wasn't expecting to find my mate tonight, but I'm glad I did, and I was lucky it was her. I looked down at her. She was staring at my chest, a hand pressed against it before she kissed me there softly and looked up at me. My Luna. I said quietly. Her skin was glowing, I didn't need any foretelling to tell me that life was going to be great. My gentle Alpha. She smiled. She kissed me once more and I knew tonight was going to be a night neither of us was going to forget. Chapter 112 Epilogue Part 1 Raven The wedding of the decade had arrived, and guests from all corners of the country were teeming into the king's territory for the occasion. Women in glamorous gowns from the latest designers, and men in custom-tailored suits and tuxes, were pouring into the grand open grounds below. My heart was racing as I stared out of the huge windows at the stunning, breathtaking view down below. It was magical. To the left was the table set for the reception dinner, decorated impressively. More guests would arrive later for the reception. Round tables were covered in blush-colored tablecloths with matching chairs, garlands of ivory flowers and ribbons of white fabric creating a roof above. To the far side were the dance floor and the cake. Right ahead to the right was the aisle with a carpet of the palest shades of pink and white roses leading from the entrance of the mansion all the way up to the dais, where they would take their vows. Above it, ribbons of white fabric were draped like a roof above the seats for the guest. Glass tables at the edge of the rose held vases of pale pink roses and garlands of green vines dangled from the ceiling, similarly to the eating area with chandeliers glittering in the center. To the side was the string quartet who would be playing the music for the ceremony. Magical. It's perfect Kia. I murmured in awe, turning to the queen herself. The beautician was finishing off her elegant bridal updo, making sure every wave of her hair was in a perfect position. A few strands framed her face and she finished by adding the floral hair vine to Kiara's bun, before pinning her veil in. Kiara smiled at me. Her face glowing radiantly, she wore an ivory one-sleeved embroidered dress that was decorated with pearls. It was a mermaid cut gown with a huge skirt that had a large trail, with the same embroidered work on it on top of the dress. She wore pearl earrings, but apart from that, her only jewelry was her engagement ring You look beautiful. I complimented. She truly did. Thank you, it's really weird that I'm nervous, although I'm already Luna and we are already mated. She said, when the beautician left, leaving us alone. I smiled softly as I walked over to her. It's still a new step. 
I said taking her hand, as I crouched down before her, her acrylic nude nails looked as perfect as the rest of her with those glittery tips. Thanks. She smiled. You look gorgeous. Thank you. I replied, my heart fluttering as I wondered what Liam would think. I had been with Kia since morning and I missed him. I was wearing an olive green, metallic, halter neck dress, with a slit down the center from the collar to my W.A. St. It was fitted up to the knees and then flared out with crystal detailing around the bodice, neckline, and W.A. St. My back was bare, save for the tattoo of Liam's name on the left side of my back, which I had gotten recently. My hair tips were now dyed a deep mauve pink and were up in an elegant updo with olive green flowers in it. My eye makeup was dramatic with envved lips, and I wore high pencil heels on my feet. It's time. Uncle El's voice came. We both turned to see him, Auntie Red, Liam, and Azura standing there. My heart skipped a beat when my eyes landed on Liam in a stone-colored suit with an open-button olive green. Shirt underneath. His hair was styled to perfection, a single strand flicking over his forehead, and that scar of his made him look even as his blazing cobalt eyes were set on me. Goddess, he was so handsome. The urge to go over and run my hand down his chest that was teasing me from those open buttons was strong and I had to fight it. I swallowed hard, my core clenching, the urge to move closer to him and kiss him tempted me, but this was Kia's day. Love. Liam's voice came through the link. Yeah, same. You look beyond, blue eyes. His intense gaze was making me a little light-headed, as he undressed me with his eyes, and I had to blink to remember where we were. She looks amazing, right? I asked, looking down at my glowing queen, my heart thundering. She does. Uncle El agreed. As do you. They walked over to us as Azura stared at Kiera with pure awe on her face. She herself looked gorgeous like Kiera's twins. She was in a blush-colored gown with a trail and some lace work. Pearl buttons going up the back with a bow at the back. You look beautiful Kiawa. She said, wrapping her arms around her. Thank you, sweetheart. Kiera kissed her forehead, smiling at her before I whistled. And you, Zuzu, are going to steal the hearts of all the little boys out there. I should hope not. Uncle El said, frowning slightly. I keep forgetting that I'm going to have to give her away too. Oh baby, not today. Auntie Red replied, kissing him. She wore a duck egg colored, net embroidered gown with a tulle net skirt, a slit up to her th, gh and one ruched sleeve. Uncle El wore a grey pinstripe suit with a white shirt and black tie looking almost as handsome as his son, yet was it bad that Liam took to an entirely new level? Liam walked over to us, pulling me into his arms and cupping the back of my neck as he kissed me deeply. His tongue slipped into my mouth, my core clenching as his hand grabbed my a.s. Naughty we am. Azura giggled as she twirled around in front of the floor-length mirror. I smiled pulling away and noticing how Uncle El was holding Kiera tightly in his arms. A father's love, something I didn't have from my own father, but I got enough from Uncle El. I didn't feel like I was missing out because I had people who loved me. You look beautiful Kia. Liam said, making Kiera smile. Thanks, Liam. She said as he hugged her tightly. I'm sure Alejandro is going to love it. Auntie Red replied. Well, we should get going, it's almost time. I'm ready. Azura exclaimed. She was going to be the little flower girl, whilst Dante was the ring bearer. The twins were far too small for the job. I was Kiera's maid of honor, but she had allowed me to choose my own clothing and hadn't set a theme for me. 
I loved this girl as I couldn't really see myself wearing blush pink. Liam kissed me once more as we all headed downstairs. He and Auntie Red headed out first, and we would wait until it was our time. Ray Han I looked down at my kitten, she looked breathtaking in her pale blue strapless sequined gown, with a silk layer clinging to her arms, her wintry makeup and her gorgeous hair styled elegantly. She looked like a winter queen and I was all for it. Her plush pink lips curled up in a tempting small smile, cupping my face before I leant down, claiming those lips in a deep kiss, the tingles of the spark spreading through me, waking the desire that she always set ablaze within me. Del, we look great right? Those women have nothing on us. Rayhana murmured, scanning the crowds as Chris pulled her clothes, kissing her. You sure do. Wanna skip the occasion so I can admire you instead? He whispered to her and I see zero CKED a brow. Really Chris, we just got here. I remarked. I was coordinated with Dulsanra in a pale blue suit with a navy shirt underneath, which I had left a few buttons open, and my hair was down. Rayhana was coordinated with Dulsanra, yet at the same time was the opposite, in a golden mirrored dress, yet her silk top layer spread around her in a rather dramatic way. Yet, she just needed a chance to dress up her bronzed skin glowing under the sun and she reminded me of those golden trophies you won at some sports game or the Oscars or something. A little too much, but I won't say that or she'd skin me alive. I smirked, okay she looked good in a very Rayhana way, daring and just needing an excuse to show off, go all out, and be totally extra. Despite being a Luna, she was still known as the Rossi Princess. Oh 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 uncle's there. Come on Del, we need photos with him. She pulled out of Chris Hold, much to his disappointment. He was wearing black pants and a W.A. coat with a black and gold blazer. Him and Rayhana really were made for one another. We walked over to Uncle Al, who was standing there talking to Marcel and Mom. Mom was carrying Skyla whilst Katalia was being picked up by Serena. Uncle's beta's mate. Uncle looked good dressed in a black tux, his hands in his pockets as he nodded to something Mom was saying. More than a year and a half had passed since Dad had left us, gone but never forgotten. Mom was doing okay, she has good days and bad days, but we were all trying to be there for her. Uncle, photos. Rayhana said as she did a twirl. How do I look? Gorgeous, I'm glad you remade. He remarked, frowning as he glanced around as if making sure no one had their eyes on her. I smirked as Chris nodded in approval. Yeah, don't worry about that. I take good care of her. He winked at Rayhana, and I had to admit it still frustrated me at times. One of your best friends totally flirting with your sister all the time. It's awkward mate or not, and these two were always, handsy. Pictures. Uncle Al said with a nod as one of the photographers came over, looking good spitfire, I can see you two have some theme or some sh, t going on. Thanks, King Burrito, I'm glad you noticed. Dulsanra replied as Uncle put his hands on both women's wa, sts, glancing at the camera. So, what are you both trying Tobe, the moon, and sun or some sh, t? Oh 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 I like that, I was thinking more winter and summer. Rayhana said pouting for the camera. The photographer seemed a little nervous with the king's cold glare directed at her but she did her job as uncle just stood there perfectly stoic, and effortlessly handsome, whilst the girls posed. My eyes went to Dulsanra and I had to admit she was so. She glanced at me, winking, and I was glad that little brat wasn't around. His addiction to Dulsanra was still ongoing. Speaking of kids. I glanced around, wondering where Leo was. Marcel, is Leo not here? I asked. 
He is, but I'm not sure where. He hasn't even come to see Al. He spaced a little and I knew he was mind-linking, someone, probably to ask them to tell Leo to come over. Leo. He had changed over the last year or so, and I knew it was because of me, yet no matter what I did he refused to talk to me. Call him, I'll take some pictures with my nephews since I'm already doing this crap. I uncle, you know we look good. Rayhana said with a pout. You do. He hugged her, kissing her forehead. Since Dad had died, he had stepped in and been there for us all. He and R.I. were really close, and I knew him being there had helped her as she had always been Daddy's girl. For me too. I looked away before I got emotional, Dalsanra wrapped her arms around me, kissing my lips softly. She understood me even when I said nothing. I held her close, brushing my nose into her neck, enjoying the feel of her body against mine. Leo came over and the tension between us was thick. I had tried to explain things to him over Christmas, but he flat out refused to listen to me. What? He asked, looking at his dad, his jaw clenched as he refused to look at me. Hey kid, not going to greet me? Uncle Al asked raising an eyebrow. Hi. Can I go now? He was thirteen, yet as expected of an alpha male, he was tall. Marcel was about to say something when uncle shook his head at him slightly before he simply nodded. One picture with your uncle then you can go. Leo exhaled and walked over to him. Rayhana and Dalsanra exchanged a look as they moved away and uncle placed an arm around his shoulders, the photographer snapped a picture before uncle jerked his head at me. I shook my head and he raised an eyebrow. I want a picture of the Rossi next generation. Now get the over here. Only thing is, Dante isn't here. I remarked, walking over to him, noting the look of irritation in Leo's eyes but uncle's grip on his shoulder was firmly keeping him in place. The ER already had an entire photo shoot. Uncle smirked. We took a picture before Marcel and Chris joined in and that was all Leo could take. You've grown, Leo. Mom said to him the moment he pulled away from uncle's hold. He gave a small nod before turning and walking off. It's not your fault. Marcel said quietly to me, but I didn't reply. It wasn't intentional, but it had been my fault, and I couldn't just ignore that. Chapter 113 Epilogue Part 2 Damon The venue was huge and there were so many guests out here. Guards lined the grounds and although there were more guests who would be coming after the vows, there were still many people here. We had all taken our seats and Alejandro had taken his place on the small stage. Surprisingly, he didn't have a best man on stage. We were werewolves, we didn't really follow traditional weddings anyway. I looked at my gorgeous girl dressed in a black dress that accentuated her curves to perfection as she sat, one leg crossed over the other, and I couldn't stop gazing at her BR3ASTS or lush thick TH. GHS. Are you just going to stare at me, or pay attention to the ceremony? She asked through the link, now glancing at me. Stare at you. I replied, that's not even up for debate. I kissed her deep red lips. She kissed me back, shaking her head seriously babe, focus. I will focus but on what's most important to me. Her. I wrapped my arm around her, kissing her forehead. I have never been happier. She leaned against me as the musicians began to play, and we all turned to see Dante, in a tux, carrying the cushion bearing the rings as he walked down the aisle at a rather brisk pace. Robin laced her fingers with mine, her heart skipping a beat as our eyes met. I pecked her lips as we turned to see our own little princess walk down the aisle her large blue eyes wandering around, and I almost chuckled. Azura really did love to take things at her own pace. Goddess kids were cute. 
she seemed to pause, getting distracted by something before Auntie Red called her. Baby, sprinkle the petals. She whispered. Oh, yes Mama. Azura replied, making some of the guests chuckle. She began to sprinkle the petals, walking along, stumbling a little on the hem of her princess dress, and paused, I realized her shoe had fallen off. Oh no. She said confused, glancing at her shoe and then ahead at the stage, I knew she had been told to keep going forward. I watched as Alejandro's nephew, Leo, got up from his seat, as it was on the edge of the row not far from where Azura was standing and grabbed her little heeled boot. Holding it out to her, she blinked and lifted her dress, sticking her foot out and making me smile. Cute. I need a picture of this. Auntie Red was about to get up, but when Leo knelt down, she smiled and sat down again. He was frowning as he put the shoe on for Azura, glancing around and glaring at all of us who were watching, the kid had the raw sea fire in him. He needed a mate to tame that anger. What's your name? Azura asked him, seemingly not bothered that she was being videoed right now or that we were in the middle of a wedding concession. Ever the curious little princess. Leo. He replied moodily, as he stood up. Thank you, well. She replied cutely before turning and walking to the front, forgetting to scatter the rest of the petals in her basket. Well, she did good enough and the carpet was made of flowers anyway. That was so cute. Robin whispered, smiling softly. Yeah, and that move coming from a Rossi. I said, feeling several eyes turn to me, including Ray Hans, Alejandro's and Leo's. We're wolf hearing. I guess only a Westwood princess could make Rossi's do stuff like that. I smiled in amusement just as Raven came down the aisle, taking her place on the stage. Then it was time for the bride herself to enter. We all turned as Kiara stepped out. She looked stunning in her gown, her eyes fixed on her king ahead. Elijah. No matter how many times we did something like this, it was still hard giving your daughter away. It wasn't the only role of mine in this wedding either. I looked at Kiara, thinking she had come so far from the little girl I used to worry so much over. I walked her down the aisle but there was no regret or worry in me. The man who awaited her, the one who made her heart race and looked at her as if she was the most precious thing in the world, was the one man I could trust her with. The king, yet before that, he was hers. Her hand may be on my arm, but her eyes were locked with her mates. Life had been hard, but the light had returned, and talking about it all had helped. Liam may have pushed me, but it had worked. I was able to enjoy life and cherish what I still had here. We reached the small stage and I placed Kiara's hand in Alejandro's, their eyes on each other's and unseeing of anything else. The intensity of their love for one another was clear as day. I smiled slightly stepping onto the stage and taking the place of the best man. A position that Alejandro had asked me to take months ago. Flashback, I had something I wanted to ask you. Alejandro said, taking a drag on his cigarette. Not like you to ask. Don't you usually state what you want? I replied, C0CKING a brow. Yeah. Well we all know you don't listen to S.H. T. Yeah, I don't. I smirked arrogantly. He gave me a cold glare before frowning. I want you to be my best man at that wedding. What? I looked at him in shock, but he was dead serious, his eyes shadowed. You were RAF's closest friend. And probably the next person in line who understands me the most. The pain of Raphael's loss would always remain, and at that moment we both felt it. I could see it in his eyes and I knew mine were probably similar. I looked at him and nodded. We may never ever admit it because we were both too proud, 
but we were both there for the other if the need ever arose. I smirked despite the emotions that consumed me. So, guess you're bowing down and accepting that you appreciate me. I mocked C0CKILY. N.A., what I appreciate is you making Kiera. She's fine. He smirked arrogantly as I frowned. D. Head. But yeah, admitting it or not, I've kinda lost my best man. So I need air placement. Our eyes met, and no matter how cold or uncaring his voice sounded, I knew he was still hurting from Raphael's death. End of flashback, I hadn't told anyone but Scarlet about this and the surprise from many was to be expected, but the vibrant smile on Kiara's face made me give her a small smile. Dad. She said, looking at Alejandro, her eyes filled with tears. Don't cry or some ERS may think I'm forcing you to do this sh, t. Alejandro murmured, making her laugh weakly before he kissed her. Alpha. You kiss the bride after the vows. Alan, one of the elder alphas on the council, said. Are you telling me I can't kiss my woman? Ah, not at all, your highness. Alan waved his hand. Good, so get him Avon. How the am I supposed to not kiss her when she looks this good? Of course. Alan replied. I have no idea who came up with this sh, t that we wait until the vows are done before a couple can kiss. I smirked as I heard Alejandro mutter that last line. Kiera smiled as Alejandro kissed her hands as they exchanged their vows and rings. I now pronounce you man and wife. You may kiss Alejandro was already kissing Kiera, bending her backward. I frowned, glancing at Azura, who was staring wide-eyed until Raven covered her eyes. I have a feeling she was going to be a handful. A surge of petals rained down upon us and everyone cheered. I glanced around, looking at all the familiar faces in the crowds. Kiara's kids. Liam and Raven, Azura, Damon. My eyes finally falling to my own mate, looking like the goddess she was as she sat there, standing out from the crowd. My queen. Our eyes met, and she gave me that teasing smirk of hers. Yes, there was still so much to live for. Kiera so how does it feel being MRS Rossi? Alejandro asked me. I like the sound of that. I replied, my gaze dipping to his lips before I kissed him once more, his arm still around me as he motioned to Darien to bring the girls over. Dante ran over wrapping his arms around my W.A. S.T. Mama, you look amazing. He said. I knelt down pulling him into my arms, feeling so happy. So do you, my love. I kissed his forehead, before standing up as Darien passed the girls to Alejandro, I kissed them both, my little angels, Skyla was trying to tug Alejandro's earring whilst Catalia simply rested her head on his shoulder. My eyes met Alejandro's and I smiled warmly. My family. My loved ones and my mate were right here, and I felt happy. Come on guys let's get some pictures. Raven called. I smiled nodding, I would make the most o of the day with them all because come tonight we would leave for our honeymoon, just him and I and something told me it was going to be one that I was never going to forget. Chapter 114 Bonus Chapter Liam Mom and Dad had been gone for over two weeks already, which meant Azura was here with us. Raven had gone early that morning to Kiara's pack as they had some shopping to do for the wedding. I don't get how women's shopping never finishes, but if they're happy shopping, what more could I ask for? Anyway, since Raven was gone, so I was stuck minding my adorable little sister. The only problem was that she's a four-year-old pup who has asked way too many questions and still picks her boogers, although she told me a few weeks ago she doesn't. Lie. She had been fairly good to be fair, 
although she gets a bit emotional every time she gets off a video call with mom. So we am, what we do now? She asked, rubbing her nose. I raised my eyebrows, it was past five in the afternoon. Well, I'm thinking, how about we make a nice meal for when Raven gets back? It will be a nice surprise for her, what do you think Pumpkin? Oh oh we am, I love the idea. She said with her eyes wide with excitement. We make cake too? Definitely make cake, Raven loves cake. But I'll make cake. Can't have her hands in the food. I felt guilty at the thought, staring at the bundle of cuteness. Waven loves we yam too. She added and I gave her a small smile, ruffling her hair. And she loves Azura too. She nodded and I gave her a tight hug. She was an observant child, and I knew that as she got older, she'll begin to notice how some people treated her, their glances and their whispered remarks. I was going to protect her the best I could. We am, do you miss Waven? She asked, concerned as she stared up at me. I do, but can't I hug my little sister otherwise? I questioned. You can. Okay, we yam you cook, I go watch TV then you give me the leftover cream. I watched her rush off before I got to work in the kitchen. She sure could be such a good girl. I had just put the roast chicken in the oven and was stirring the custard when I realized Azura was no longer in front of the TV. S.H. T. I didn't even realize when she left. I could hear her steady heartbeat and rushed to check up on her, pushing open our bedroom door to see her sitting on Raven's stool in front of the makeup table with several of her makeup palettes and lipsticks open. Look we am, I but a fool. I looked at her. Wow, she sure turned into a Halloween horror pumpkin overnight. Garish purple lipstick was smeared over her lips and all around it. Her cheeks were a horrendous pink and her eyes looked as if someone had punched her a few times, and to make it worse, the liquid liner was spread all over her lids and around her eyes. Goddess! You were far more beautiful before baby girl. I commented quickly, going over to her. S.H. T. Would Raven get mad? She had totally wrecked half these powdery eyeshadows. No. I look nice now. She pouted at her reflection. Did she really think she looked good? S.H. T. Now I needed to get this all cleaned up before Raven got back. Okay look, let's get you washed up. No, no we am. I keep it on, I show Waven I love her makeup. No, if Raven sees you like that she might scream at how scary you look. I said grabbing the wipes Raven used before showering. Wrong sentence. Her large eyes pooled with tears, getting whiter and whiter by the second. Her lips quivered and I closed my eyes just as she broke into sobs. We am say I sky, I know sky. I want mama. Tears. An entire waterfall of them. I remembered the last time I triggered her off when Raven had first returned home. No pumpkin, come on, no crying. You look beautiful, if you want to wear makeup, you wear makeup, okay? Mama. S.H. T. I picked her up only for her to scream louder, her sobs getting worse, and she began struggling in my arms. Whatever she had put on her eyes was spreading down her face and now I think even the Joker would be put to shame. Okay, okay. Azura, listen. Mama. S.H. T. I carried her from the bedroom, rocking her slightly to soothe her. Look Azura, it's Peppa Pig. We yam watch stupid Peppa. I want Mama. Her face was bright red and... Well, black, purple and blue too, but that wasn't the point right now. The smell of something burning made my fall to the gas cooker. Gaze S.H.T. The custard. One second, 
pumpkin. I ran to the kitchen switching it off, the smell of burned custard filled my nose and I sighed. There goes that. She writhed and kicked wanting to be put down, so I took her to the sofa, putting her down and crouching before her. Okay Azura, come on baby girl, don't cry, please? How can I make it up to you? She continued screaming and crying please Azra, come on, I'll do anything. Tell me what do you want, sweets? Coke? Chocolates? Her screaming suddenly stopped and I narrowed my eyes. Wasn't that a bit too fast for tears to just stop? But, her cheeks were soaking wet. I don't trust kids. Our own mini joker now sat up, staring at me and I could almost see the cogs in her brain working. We yam make me sad. She stated, her eyes blurring with tears all over again. And Liam is sorry, I just miss seeing my beautiful baby sister's face without this I said gently, the urge to wash makeup. Her face was hard to fight. But we yam like Waven wearing makeup. She sobbed. But my sister is more beautiful. Look, Mom, Kiara and Raven wear makeup because they are getting older and ugly. Please don't kill me, ladies. But you don't need it, because you are a beautiful princess. You don't need make you I said as she wiped her eyes, smearing the makeup over her hands. I tell Mama that. She promised, looking so sorrowful my heart squeezed. Goddess, kids are hard. It won't be our secret? No, Mama say never keep secrets from Mama. If anyone make me sad or upset, no secrets. I tell Mama now. Phone Mama. I nodded, quickly taking my phone out and video calling Mom. I'm sure it was still a day over there. Sure enough, they answered, the sun shining down on them both and I could see Mom and Dad were lounging on the beach. Baby girl. Mom said, her smile vanishing when she saw Azura's face. Mama. Liam no like my makeup. Dad commented, trying to suppress his smile. Oh my baby. Why don't you take it off and Raven can apply something pretty and pink? Mom suggested. Raven is not here. I reminded her then you can pink sparkly makeup? Azra asked hopefully. I no see any pink yes, Liam will put some pretty pink makeup on you, okay? I'm sure there's something there, okay? Mom replied, smiling okay mama. Liam said you and Waven are ugly with no makeup. She added quickly. I narrowed my eyes, I'm sure she just said Liam correctly. This kid was shady. I will sort Liam out when I come home, now go wash your face and Liam put some glittery makeup on her, okay? Right. I sighed in defeat. This was going to be a long evening an hour later, I had wiped her face clean, taken the roast out of the oven, and put the sliced steak fries into the oil before I was once again in front of Raven's makeup table. I had salvaged what I could from the palettes that Azura had dug into and I was currently putting makeup on her face. Raven had mind linked not long ago, telling me she was close and would be home soon. No we am, you use this one. She said, pointing to a glittery royal blue. No, I think this pink is nicer. The tears were beginning, and I quickly dabbed the brush into the blue glitter and patted it lightly onto her eyes. Okay, now lipstick, we am. I nodded and added some lipstick lightly. Raven's makeup was dark. I realize Kiara used to have a lot of pinks and glitters in comparison to Raven's, which were so much darker. This girl. Well, she had to go and touch Raven's stuff. I sighed, I hope Raven didn't get mad. We finished with some gold polish and I felt drained. This was worse than 10 hours of extreme training. We left the bedroom and I looked at it. Azura, 
who was now smiling contently. Okay, now you watch TV and I'll go set the table, Raven will be back soon. You promised me coke and sweets. I looked down at the little gremlin, she sure knew how to get what she wanted. I poured a little coke into a glass alongside a small fun-size pack of chocolates. She needed to have dinner. I returned to the kitchen, this time making sure I kept my eyes on her, not trusting her to wander off again. When Raven finally opened the door, her scent hit me like a wave of calmness. I walked over to her before she even managed to put the bags down, pulling her into my arms and lifting her off the ground as I spun her around. Goddess, I missed her. Liam. She exclaimed, dropping the bags as she locked her arms around my neck. Thank Goddess you're home. Pulling her head down, I kissed her with everything I had. The tingles of the bond and the feel of her ever so soft lips against mine felt so good that all I wanted to do was pin her up against the wall and never let her go. Wave in. Azura said and I pulled away, thinking we only had a few weeks left. We got this. Wow, you look so beautiful. Raven cooed as she gave me a final smile, her gaze lingering on my lips before she pulled Azura into her arms. Turned I to thank you, Waven. Her eyes me, and I knew from the spark in those blue ones that she was ready to complain about me. Liam was a meanie. The tears began flowing and I shut the door, wanting to bang my head against it. Goddess, I know you wanted the Dimos line to live on, but let me live a few years or a decade in peace, without any kids. Please. Dinner was over and Raven had put Azura to bed. I had just washed up and dropped onto the sofa. Tired? Raven asked sympathetically, stepping out of Azura's bedroom wearing a black silk cami and those tiny shorts, with an open gown on top. Not that tired. I said, my eyes trailing over her. She smiled in amusement, coming over and walking behind the sofa placing her hands on my shoulders before she began massaging them. I closed my eyes, groaning in satisfaction. You're tense? It's hard to believe one toddler did this. She bent forward, kissing my lips as I stared up at her. That one is not just an ordinary pup. Said. Oh. She kinda ruined some of your makeup. Maybe you could buy replacements? I saw, they're not that ruined, they're okay, still usable. She reassured me, kissing my neck. But it seems my alpha has been rather stressed. How about I take good care of you? I hardened in my P asterisk NTS, her hand running down my chest as she placed sensual kisses along my neck. I think I'd like that. I tangled my hand into her hair pulling her down just as her hand cupped my crotch, sending pleasure flowing through me. But before I could flip her over my shoulder into my law asterisk P, the guest room door opened with a creak and Raven jerked away as Azura appeared in the doorway, clearly sleepy, all dressed in her penguin onesie holding a matching penguin plushie in her hand. Waven, I'm scared. Raven ah baby, don't worry, come on. Cood hurrying over to her, leaving me with just a reminder of her scent and a view of her A S before she cast me an apologetic look, closing the door behind them. I stretched my arms over the top of the sofa, resting my head back as I stared at the ceiling. Yep, definitely no kids for a few years. Twenty minutes later I decided to go check if Azura was asleep. Opening the door. I stopped in the doorway seeing both fast asleep snuggled together. I smiled slightly, okay maybe kids weren't so bad. I walked over to the bed, slowly pulled the blanket over them, and planting a kiss on both of their foreheads before I left the room closing the door behind me. Chapter 115 Bonus Chapter It had been six months since Kiera and Alejandro's wedding and whilst the king and queen had gone off on a four-week honeymoon, 
their children had resided at the Black Storm Pack. I heard from Liam that Rayhan had gotten stressed out with Dante just as much as Liam had within Azura when Uncle El and Auntie Red had gone on their trip. Luckily for me, I got to spend time with my beautiful mate without any kids around, but I was still secretly praying Liam had a kid soon. I did love kids. They are cute, and when Robin was ready, I didn't mind having one myself. My mate, one who was so hard-working and organized. Speaking of. She stepped out of the bathroom with a cloud of steam, wearing maroon lingerie and a black satin cap on her head. Don't look at me like that, I just showered she replied, despite her heart racing I tilted my head, winking at her. You need to keep your hair mask on for a while anyway. I will get ready in the meantime. She smiled coming over to me. She climbed on top of me, claiming my lips in a passionate kiss. I was in nothing but boxer shorts and she felt so good. She smiled, pulling away despite feeling my hard shaft against her core. Not today, handsome. She smiled, kissing my neck tenderly. Tonight we are having guests, remember? There's a lot to do, oh yeah. Your brother and Mama and Channing. Mama and Channing have been, uh, staying over at each other's. I heard they may move in together. I scrunched my nose, I get that there was something there, but to know they were taking the next step. They need each other. She replied softly as she began applying her makeup giving me a good view of her is that swallowed up that gstr, ng so perfectly. This woman was blessed with curves that would make any woman envious. Yeah, I know. Mama's not been happier, and it's nice to see her becoming herself once more. I sat up, I had so much work to do today. Yes. She said, now turning and looking at me not missing her eyes dipping to my hard shaft before roaming over the rest of my body. I winked at her, bending down and taking hold of her chin before I kissed her lips. What's wrong beautiful? Nothing. You going to be okay with that? She asked, and I didn't miss the telltale sign of her pressing her legs together. Want to take care of it? I asked huskily the urge to her right here was consuming me. With pleasure. She whispered. Although I had a quickie in mind, she had something different, and I was not. Complaining the moment she dropped to her knees, pulling my boxers down with one swift pull. She licked her lips, as she ran her hands over my hard shaft, a GR0AN escaping me the moment her fingers ran along the entire length before she wrapped her hand around it and licked the tip sensually. Pleasure rushed through me like a tidal wave. I placed my hand on the wall behind her just as her lips wrapped around my tip and she M0ANED, swirling her tongue along my D, CK, sending shuddering rivets of pleasure through me. That's it, baby girl. I whispered huskily with approval. She used her hand to pump it as she began to take more and more into her mouth. Her M0ANS and the scent of her arousal filled the air. My own pleasure made me thrust into her harder. She looked so crouching before me, those lush thighs of hers parted, her NS hard against the flimsy fabric of her bra. I leant down slightly, grabbing her Brie asterisk AST and making her whimper. Baby. That's it. I couldn't stop myself from closing my eyes, reveling in the pleasure that she was inflicting upon me. She was so good at this, I thrust into her mouth harder and faster. The sound of my D, her mouth and our M0ANS were the only things that I could hear as I felt myself nearing, my hands braced on the wall tightly behind her and she gripped me with one hand taking me in fully. I hit her throat a few times share mouth hard and fast just as I come. GR0ANING in Uphoria, my thrusts became J3RKY and she SVCKED me off completely, swallowing every drop of my seed as I came down from my high. Delicious. K. 
came her breathy voice through the bond. Perfect. I replied huskily, pulling out and tugging her to her feet. My arms wrapped around her W.A. S.T., I kissed her hard, my zero R.G.A.S.M. still sending waves through me and all I wanted was to kiss her forever. The sweet taste of her mouth was mixed with my own seed, and I didn't really care. It tasted perfect, she tasted perfect. She m 0 a n e d against my lips, and I slipped one hand between her th, ghs, devouring her mouth as I pushed her panties aside, finding her little pearl of pleasure. This girl was even. It was late in the evening, and Rick was here along with Mama and Channing. Both were definitely into each other. We had gotten food from out and were now seated around the table. How you been Mama? I asked Mom, thinking I saw her less these days. Great, I started working with the team at the hospital and helping set everything up. She said, giving me a small smile. I nodded. I'm glad you're keeping yourself busy. I glanced at Channing, who was smiling we sure are. We're almost done with the final bits and our pack is complete. He said with a nod. Rick nodded as he forked some noodles up. We finished as planned on schedule. I think that calls for drinks. He raised his glass of juice. It does, only I have uni tomorrow. Robin reminded him. I smirked pulling her clothes and kissing her. I'm sure missing one day won't hurt, right? I'm not missing uni. She smiled, and I felt a sense of deja vu. Understood. I smiled back at her, thinking she was passionate about everything she did. As long as you stay up late tonight. That black dress looks fine on you, baby girl. I remarked through the link. I'll enjoy you tearing it off later. She replied, her hand smoothly reaching over and care asterisking my th, gh. She paused as if realizing something, before tilting her head. Everything okay? I asked her, lifting her hand to my lips and kissing it. Yet. Yeah. What's the date? Twelfth. I frowned in concern. She nodded. Hmm. Is everything okay, Robin? Mom asked her. I had to admit I loved their bond, Robin had always taken care of Mama, and when she had found out we were mates she had been in tears out of happiness. Yet. Yeah. Robin said forcing a smile, but something was wrong. I could feel it through the bond. Baby, what is it? Robin? Rick asked sharply. My period's late. Robin said, abruptly standing up my heart skipped a beat as I realized what she said. From the time we spent together, she was always on time. Heck, 28 day cycle and then 5 days on. Oh. Channing said before wriggling his eyebrows. Do we see another Nicholson on the way? Are you two using anything? Mom asked worriedly. Mama, seriously. I said as Rick choked on his drink. Can we not do this right now? He cringed. Robin? I looked at her, she was standing there frozen. I got up, pulling her into my arms. Hey. Whatever it is, we'll deal with it. Maybe it's just a change. I said, unsure of how to feel. Her reaction was worrying me. I knew she had uni and plans ahead for so much more. Excuse us. I pulled her down the hall and into the bathroom, shutting the door behind us, my heart thudding as I stared at my gorgeous mate who was just, not reacting. Baby. She blinked when I cupped her face and tilted her head up towards mine. If you aren't ready. Just the thought that filled my head made my heart sting. She placed her finger on my lips, shaking her head. Don't. I'm just. Shocked. I mean, 
I don't know if I am, but if I am, then we'll be fine. I just, I don't want to get excited and then realize it was just a false alarm. She whispered the last part, and it took me a second to realize what she had just said. Wait. You don't mind having a baby? She looked up at me, a smile spreading on that gorgeous face of hers. Not really. I smiled at her, feeling a weight lift from my chest as I cupped her face and kissed her passionately, pulling her into my arms. It promised to take care of you, through it all, after it and forever. She pulled away and raised an eyebrow. Don't get ahead of yourself, baby, I may not be. One way to find out. I dropped to my knees, closing my eyes as I placed my ear to her stomach. I wasn't sure. Nothing? She asked nervously. It's kinda early I guess, usually people pick up a bit later. We'll go to the doctors tomorrow. She nodded, and despite how she was feeling, I knew she was trying to keep a level head. Well, you know, if you aren't and you want one. To my surprise, she nodded and smiled shyly. That was a first for Robin. Yet. Yeah. I never knew you liked kids. I said, pulling her into my arms once more. I never said I didn't. Come on, let's return to the table. I smiled as she opened the door, hand in hand as we walked back to the table, is everything okay? Mom asked us, worriedly. Yeah mama, we'll go to the hospital tomorrow. Or I'll get a pregnancy test. I don't want everyone to know. Robin murmured, taking her seat again. Sounds like a plan, either way, I'm sure you two will be amazing parents. Channing added. Besides, I think Monty would really love some grandkids to play with. They smiled at each other and I realized a child may just be what will keep mom occupied when Channing, Robin, and I were working. Then make sure you tell us if it's a yes or no. Rick added to his sister, who nodded. We sure will. I replied, sitting down and kissing her lips once more. Chapter 116 Monica Channing and I had returned to mine, well it would soon be ours. His children and brother were as understanding of our relationship as my son was. It was just Anna who couldn't stomach it. Yet, she was strictly not allowed on Blue Moon territory. When she found out about Channing's new position, she wanted him back. Disgusting. I hoped I didn't have many run-ins with her, I was better off without it. She had cheated on Channing when he was an amazing selfless man. I will always love Aaron, and just the thought of him made my heart ache, but I was able to love Channing too. Perhaps it would never reach the level of love I had for Aaron, but it was enough. Want to visit his grave tomorrow? He asked, pulling me onto the sofa next to him. He was always so understanding. Despite both his legs being destroyed in the Battle of Hecate's betrayal years ago, he had not let it get to him. This man was strong, brave, and always happy. He'd use crutches when needed or his wheelchair, but either way, he never let it get to him. I placed my hand on the top part of his leg, looked into his eyes, and nodded. Yeah, tomorrow I will. I rested my head on his shoulder. The pain in my chest was often bearable but then there were moments when it returned with strong force. Damon and Robin, it would be amazing if they were going to be parents. I would happily mind the child. He chuckled. Oh, I know you would. He said kissing my forehead. Do you think it's going to be a boy or girl? Now that's a tough one, I'd like to say girl, but maybe a boy? Oh. I'd love a girl, I always wanted a daughter. I have Robin though. I smiled, kissing his cheek softly. Thank you, Channing, for being you. He gave me a warm smile as I ran my fingers through his hair. 
and thank you for being so perfect. He claimed my lips with his and although I was far from perfect, for him to look at me with such adoration and love made me feel like I was worth something. I hugged him tightly. Thank you. Okay, you need to stop thanking me. He remarked, wrapping his strong arms around me and tickling me. I laughed, trying to get away before he stopped and pulled me in front of him. Money. Yes? I asked, looking up at him. He looked serious and I saw the conflict in his eyes. Whatever it was, it was serious. If Anna ever moves on and marks someone, would you allow me to mark you? He asked quietly. I looked at him sharply. The rule of marking. Anna was alive so there was no way I could mark Channing, and he couldn't mark me unless he was wearing my mark, or vice versa. Aaron was gone, so his mark could be removed by anyone bearing my mark, but Channing's mark would only be removed if Anna moved on. I looked at him and smiled, nodding. A few months ago I wouldn't have been able to, but Aaron would always be a part of me, and as much as having his mark gone would hurt. It was something I know he'd want me to do. I had Damon, my Aaron's son. Yes, I would. I whispered, knowing it would also ease the ache in my chest. Now I just pray that she goes, finds someone, and marks them. I laughed. Isn't that wishing bad on someone else? That's true. Maybe she'll find someone as awful as she is. He sighed heavily. Sometimes it gets draining to be tied to her despite the rejection. I know, but I'm sure she will find someone and take a chosen mate. And I can't wait for it. Me too. I whispered, placing my arms on top of his as I leaned on his shoulder inhaling his warm, comforting scent. Everything was no longer so dark. Robin Damon had told Liam about my chance of being pregnant. The two men could keep nothing from one another. So now he and Raven were here. I was going to pee on a stick and there was an audience to see the results. I wanted to kick Damon's, but he was just too cute and excited for me to do that. I stared at the stick that Raven had brought for me first thing in the morning. You should do one. I said suddenly as she giggled with excitement. Oh, I'm not pregnant. She waved me off. I raised an eyebrow. Well, I hadn't seen her for like two weeks and I swear her stomach looked a little round. You might be. I shrugged, sighing as I unboxed the test, glaring at the two men. The only good thing was they had brought an entire box of fresh donuts, pastries, and rolls. Oh, and hot drinks. Okay. I'll do this for her fun. Raven decided, taking the second packet. Love, you're on contraception, remember? Liam reminded her, raising an eyebrow. I'm doing this for moral support for Robin. Raven replied hands on hips as she stared at her mate. I smiled, well, I guess it's better than just one of us doing it. Want me to go first? I nodded, yes, please. I could feel Damon's eyes on me as both men sat there eating the sugary treats. Why did they still look so good even when they ate such high-calorie foods? Raven came out of the bathroom quite quickly placing the stick flat on the paper towel I had placed ready on the cabinet. You got this. Damon said, coming over to me and kissing me softly. I nodded and took a deep breath, decided to go do mine. A few minutes later, it was time to take a look at my test. I took a deep breath, ready to look at the results when my eyes fell on Raven's stick, one that everyone seemed to have forgotten about. I smiled slightly at the two clear lines on the stick. What does it say? Damon said, coming over. My eyes snapped to my test and my heart skipped a beat. Pregnant. UMM, you might want to sit down. I replied solemnly. 
it's not what you guys were expecting. Damon's eyes softened and he smiled. It's okay. He was about to come over but Raven was watching me with her eyes wide, and I knew she was trying to gauge my reaction. It sure is. Because soon the both of you are going to be on daddy duties. I said, holding up both sticks. Damon froze, his eyes flying wide open before he rushed towards me and lifted me off my feet, spinning me around as he laughed in excitement. Girl, I... I don't even know what to say. I smiled, locking my arms around his neck. You don't need to say anything at all. I whispered before kissing him. The excitement I felt inside was far too much to put into words. Oh, goddess, we were going to be parents. I was so thrilled, I kissed him with everything I had as he rocked me from side to side, his heart pounding and even as he kissed me that smile never left his lips. Goddess, I can't wait to have a mini you to hold. He whispered kissing me again. I smiled, hugging him tightly before I glanced at the other couple, who were both standing there staring at each other. Liam looked stunned, and perhaps a little pale. Guys? I said, snapping them from their trance. I'm pregnant. Wow! Raven suddenly exclaimed blinking. Wow indeed, you were on your pills. A dazed Liam responded shell-shocked. Hmm, religiously. The doctor gave Raven murmured. Them. Did you forget any? Damon asked. He no. Yeah, she didn't. Liam mused. I guess it didn't work since you are a Dimas prince. I replied thoughtfully. Maybe just like a Leakin doesn't need to mark someone to get them pregnant, perhaps similarly the C0 interception wasn't enough. Wait, what? Liam asked, shocked. He was a smart man, but a little clueless. Just an assumption, but it could be that the medicine wasn't strong enough to stop your SP3RM. I said making Raven's eyes widen as she nodded. That makes sense. Damon murmured as Liam ran his hand through his hair that had seconds earlier been styled to perfection. Oh, dear Alpha, you won't have time to style that head of yours once your child comes along. S.H. T. I had a dream and there were kids all around. Liam shuddered as Raven walked over to him and cupped his face. We'll be okay. He nodded, giving her a small nervous smile as he pulled her into his arms and kissed her for it. Well, I think I'll book us in for a scan. It's best we know how far along we are. I remarked. We'll have to be over at Blood Moon, our maternity unit is still not finished. Damon remarked. I nodded as Liam whistled. I glanced at him thinking although his hearing wasn't as good as the Lekan King's, surely, he must have noticed Raven's tiny physique looking a little round around the stomach. Then again Liam was a little clueless. I wonder if there's two in there for her to be showing slightly. Raven the following day we were both at the hospital, Robin had just had her skin and I was so nervous and excited all at once. A little Liam. That was going to be so cute. Seeing Robin's little bean had been incredible. Watching Damon smile as he held her hand made my own heart melt. She deserved him, they were perfect together. Okay Luna, come. Dr. Jensen motioned for me. Okay. I gave Liam a quick kiss, getting onto the bed once she had put a new paper sheet down. I tugged my top up and lowered my pants slightly. You got a belly. Damon remarked, making me stare at my tummy. Now that he mentioned it. Liam frowned, tilting his head as he stared at my tummy. You may be further along than you think. Dr. Jensen replied with a smile as she applied the cold gel. Let's see. She began pressing around as I stared at the screen opposite. My. Dr. Jensen whispered in awe. Goddess. 
Robin gasped, clamping her hand over her mouth as Liam looked at her sharply. I stared at the doctor and then back at the screen where there was clearly a womb that did not look normal. It looked. Doctor why does that look so? I began, my heart thudding. Damon whistled. Luna. Alpha as you can see, you aren't having just one pup, congratulations you are having quintuplets. This is a miracle. She exclaimed, a huge smile on her face. My heart plummeted as I stared at the screen before me. Quintuplets. Five pups, Alpha. She said, staring at Liam, who was frozen, his hand holding mine but he hadn't reacted. Liam? I whispered, feeling far too stunned to wrap my head around it. He still didn't reply, his face pale, his deep blue eyes wide as he stared ahead, completely still far too shocked at the news that he was soon to be a father of five. And then, the next thing I knew, my six-foot-four handsome giant crashed to the floor. My alpha had fainted. Goddess. Chapter 117 Bonus Chapter Two hours had passed, and I was still stunned. I vaguely heard Damon tell the doctor to not pass the news on to anyone that Raven and I would do that ourselves. I can't believe I fainted, but it still can't be real right? Five pups? Goddess. Are you okay? Raven asked me, cupping my face as I sat on the hospital bed. The sparks from her touch rippling through me. I closed my eyes, pulling her between my legs and resting my head against her BR3ASTS for a moment. Yet. Yeah. I mean, I should be asking you that. I looked up at her concerned, my eyes skipping over her tiny frame, how the was that even going to work? I ran my hands down her waist, despite the shock there was a spark of excitement inside of me. Raven and I were actually having a pup together, scratch that pups. I looked up into her gorgeous eyes, raking my fingers through her hair. How are you going to carry five? I asked, tugging her clothes and kissing her softly. I'm sure I'm capable. I told you, I might be small, but I'm tough. Raven said smiling at me. I guess. We're going to be parents pretty soon hey? Yeah, soon. I pulled her onto my lap, wrapping my arms around her tightly. Are you really okay? She raised an eyebrow. I am, I'm shocked, but I'm more worried about you. She replied, car asterisking my jaw. I sighed. One kid is hard, five. But we'll manage somehow, we will. She replied confidently. So how about we go and share the news with your family? And I want to tell Taylor too. I nodded, kissing her again. Although she seemed shocked, the excitement was there. Even though I was a mess of emotions about having children, I still could imagine having our pups in my arms, it didn't sound too bad. What is it? Mom asked looking concerned. Her gaze flitted between us both as she stood up from where she had been sitting, ruffling her hair. We had come straight to their home from the hospital to break the news. We have a gift for you. Raven proclaimed, holding out the envelope with the scan image inside. A gift? Mom asked, taking it and about to open it when Raven waved her hand, stopping her. Open it together. Yeah, a gift. Good luck. I added jokingly. I hope they were ready for grandparents' duties. They exchanged looks before Azura came running over. Is it a present for me too, Waven? She asked, as Dad lifted her onto his law asterisk P, kissing her forehead. Yes, it is. Mom slid the image out, tilting her head, a frown creasing her face as Dad's eyebrows shot up. Yup, slowly processing it. Uncle, Auntie, congratulations. 
I'm pregnant with five pups. Raven announced, placing a hand on her stomach. Her words made my heart thud and I tugged her into my arms, placing my hand over hers. My tiny Luna. Holy, Dad's eyes widened as Raven's words registered, whilst Mom's eyes blazed silver as she stared at Raven and then back at the image in her hands. Five babies. Five small wee yams and wavens. I love it. Azura screamed, making Mom and Dad both snap out of whatever shock they were in. Oh, my goddess! Mom jumped up, pulling Raven from my arms and hugging her. That's just that's amazing. I mean, oh my goddess! Five. How is that even possible? It's so rare. Oh goddess, what did the doctors say? It can't be safe. We need Kiara, or you need to go to Kiara. She needs to make sure all six of you are safe. Oh, my goddess, six of you. You are a family of seven now. Oh my, smiled slightly at mom's panic and excitement. Whilst dad sat there stunned, not even bothered by Azura's jumping on the sofa whilst screaming and laughing like a crazy lunatic. Five, good luck. He now spoke, smiling slightly. Congratulations. He stood up, giving me a hug and I couldn't resist smiling back as we stepped back. Mom was still smothering Raven with hugs and kisses. Let her breathe, kitten. Dad murmured, tugging Mom away from Raven before he smirked at us both. I thought I had it bad with two but we have an entire pack ready to help out and of course, Red, and I won't mind helping. Liam wasn't a bad kid so hopefully, Karma won't come back to bite you too in the... But then again, Raven on the other hand, all I'm going to say is may the goddess help you both. Uncle, that's not nice. Raven pouted as Dad hugged her, planting a kiss on her forehead. You were a little minion. An adorable little devilish one though. He smirked, looking down at her as she stuck her tongue out. See, you haven't changed. He didn't let go of her as mom hugged me tightly, saying how excited she was. Azura baby, are you excited to become an auntie? She asked her. I'm a big girl, I take care of your babies, okay? She said with such determination that I felt a little worried. You sure can. I said, although I think she was just going to lead the little army to mischief. She smiled up at me and I picked her up. Regardless of how naughty she was, I loved her, and I knew I was going to love these five too. I glanced over at mom asking Raven how she was feeling, what to avoid and how she was going to be there for her every step of the way. We were going to be okay. Mine and Raven's eyes met, and she blushed, lightly smiling. I love you darling, and I know you are going to be an amazing bite-sized mama. Love you too. We will be okay, baby. I nodded at her reply as mom hugged her again, happiness and excitement clear in her eyes. It was evening and we were about to video call Kiara. We had told Zach and Taylor. Taylor had been so shocked before it had turned to excitement, whilst Zack just looked stunned, saying he was glad Taylor wasn't a woman. I wonder how Kiara will take it. Raven whispered, her oversized jumper sliding off one of her shoulders. I kissed her neck softly just as the call was answered to reveal not only Kiara, but Alejandro, his arm around her shoulder as he smoked a cigarette. I never would have ever thought that the Lycan King would be my brother-in-law, it's still weird that he's mated to my sister. Hey, guys. Kiara said, smiling at us both whilst raising her eyebrows at Raven. What is it? Yeah, make it fast. Alejandro added coldly, wrapping his hand that was holding his cigarette around Kiara's neck before he kissed her ear. Well. I'm pregnant. Raven stated, looking at me. Goddess, she was beautiful. Kiara gasped, 
her eyes sparkling with excitement. Oh, my goddess! Ah! She screamed, bouncing on her seat as she clamped her hand over her mouth. I'm so happy. Told you it's going to be that shit. Welcome to the world of Na Pravasi. Alejandro remarked with a smirk. Listen here, big boy, that's not even the main news. Raven pouted. Alejandro raised an eyebrow, whilst Kiera couldn't stop smiling. Is it twins? She asked suddenly, looking at me and smiling happily. No. It's quintuplets. Raven blurted out. Kiera's smile vanished, her eyes widening, and even Alejandro looked shocked, although he covered it up fast. Wow, guess you guys are actual animals, that's a wolliliter. He snickered and I frowned at him. Alejandro. Be nice. Kiera scolded. Guys, that's amazing. But hun you need to take it easy, I'm going to visit and I'm going to check up on how you're doing, I'm going to be there. Dustin, one of our deltas, his mate had quads and it was amazing. This is even more mind-blowing. Babe, I need to see them. Do you have a picture? Now all night she's going to be gushing about these pups, although I'd rather you be gushing. Kiera slammed her hand over his mouth her cheeks flushing, and I sighed. Seriously this guy had no filter, I did not need to know that. We have a picture. I changed the subject smoothly, picking it up and holding it to the screen. And I'll send it to you too. Raven chirped in. That looks strange, makes me wonder if I have trypophobia or some shit like that. Alejandro remarked as Kiera frowned at him before admiring the image. They are gorgeous. She cooed. Aren't they? Raven smiled happily. Um, they're just beans, I added, confused as to what they were finding cute. Women are weird as. Alejandro added, and for once I kinda realized that I actually do agree that women can be a little strange. Previous next I nodded as the girls talked about some vitamins or something. Make sure you get Elijah to look after them, he ain't got nothing better to do anyway with his time. He snickered. Or are you just sad uncle got to retire when you're only six years younger than him? Raven piped in. N.A., I'm definitely not as sold as him. Well, we are definitely coming down because girl I need to see you in person. Kiera said before she smiled at me. They are going to be perfect. I nodded. Yeah, regardless of everything, I knew they were going to be perfect. Chapter 118 Bonus Chapter Four Months Later Raven Pregnancy was hard. I felt exhausted, I could barely walk sit up, or anything. My back ached continuously and I was actually going to be leaving for Kia's pack in a week or two as I was nearing the end of my pregnancy and everyone agreed I needed her by my side. For her to come here was a lot harder, so Liam and I would go there whilst Uncle El and Auntie Red would run the pack in our absence. News had spread that the Blood Moon Pack's Luna was going to have quintuplets, and I knew it was more of a spectacle than anything else. I refused to go to events, I didn't want to see anyone. Goddess. I'm not something to stare at. I looked over at Robin, with her normal-sized bump, she was due around the same time as me. She was further along than I was, but due to mine being a multiple pregnancy, I was probably going to have them first. You okay, babe? She asked me. I nodded although I couldn't even see my lap. I had liked my belly when it was smaller, but now it feels like all I was, was this big round hot air balloon. Hey ladies. Damon said coming over with some ice cream cones. He passed Robin one, kissing her lips before smiling at me and passing me the second cone. I frowned taking it. 
wasn't I already fat? It's not poisoned, Raven. He said with a smile, care asterisking Robin's stomach as he kissed her again. I didn't say it was. I replied, knowing I sounded snappy. Sorry. It's all good, I'm used to it. He winked at me until Robin turned her head sharply to him. Excuse me? What do you mean by used to it? Oh hey, I didn't mean it like that. He said making her frown deeper. You insinuated that you are used to being snapped at. She replied icily, I nodded in agreement. She isn't wrong. I added before leaving them to their argument. We were currently at our place and Liam was cooking, but he was taking forever. A knock on the door made me turn. I'll get it. Liam called. Well, obviously, I hated getting up. My eyes followed him to the door, my eyes on that of his. I hated how we weren't able to have much anymore. I just felt horrible. No matter how doting Liam was towards me. I still felt so big and uncomfortable. He opened the door to reveal Taylor and Azura. Hey, our princess wanted to come over, so I thought I'll pop in to see my favorite girls. Taylor said as Azura ran over to me and I smiled. Waven how are my babies? Azura, asked, hurrying over and kissing my belly five times. I smiled, giving her a hug they are completely fine. I replied. And how are you, Waven? She asked, her eyes full of concern. Mama said not to bother you today, so I promise I won't. You never bother me Zuzu. I'm great and so are the babies. I gave her a cuddle as she turned to Robin. Hello, Wabin. She waved and quickly planted a kiss on Robin's stomach too. Hello. Princess. Robin smiled at her, and I didn't miss Damon's look of relief that Robin was distracted. Taylor gave me a cuddle before sitting down next to me. Want me to massage your shoulders? He asked. I know seeing me pregnant made them all sympathize with me, but I was okay for most of the time and I didn't want them fussing over me. It's okay, Liam did that not long ago. I smiled at him where's Zack? Working. Taylor replied with a pout. So are you guys not going to find out the genders? We already have. Damon said, care asterisking Robin's thigh. But we are keeping it a surprise for now. Robin replied. Taylor pouted. You won't even tell me? Robin smiled slightly. Nope. It's a surprise until the baby shower. I had a feeling Liam knew because he and Damon didn't have secrets, but I had not asked Liam, knowing that he would tell Emmy and I wanted to respect Robin's wish. That's unfair, I love babies. Taylor said, looking at me. And I know you said you're keeping them a surprise, still sticking to that? Yes, we are. I replied looking over at Liam who was plating the food. Goddess, he looks so working in the kitchen. He turned and gave me a wink. Looking beautiful, love. I gave a small smile, I didn't feel beautiful. Oh no, Waven, why are you not wearing makeup? Azura said suddenly. I'm too tired. I replied. She looked at Liam over in the kitchen before shaking her head, her eyes full of worry. But we Yam said you need makeup because you look ugly with no makeup. She told me. The clang of something falling in the kitchen area made my eyes snap to Liam. Did he now? I only said that to get her to stop wearing makeup. He said quickly, his eyes wide as he stared at me. I frowned unhappily. Yeah, nice. I said coldly. Taylor babe, help me up. Raven. Liam came over as Azura simply shook her head, sighing don't. I suddenly felt really emotional. 
I already felt awful and, this didn't help matters. I sorry Waven. Azura said realizing I felt upset. Oh Zuzu don't be, you did, and said nothing wrong. I just need to go lay down for a bit. I replied as Taylor helped me off the sofa. Love. Liam tugged me into his arms, glancing at Taylor, who refused to let go unless I said so. I smiled at him, now that was a good friend. I'm tired, Liam. I want to go lay down until dinner. I said quietly as Taylor let go of me. Not when you're angry at me. He said softly, lifting me up bridal style with ease and carrying me to the bedroom. I didn't reply, knowing the tears would come if I spoke. He placed me down on the bed as if I was the most precious thing to him. No matter how huge or weird I looked he still looked at me with adoration. Talk to me, love. He whispered, kneeling down by the bed he took my hands and kissed them tenderly. I'm fine, I just, how could you say I look ugly without makeup when I feel ugly as it is? I pressed my lips together, refusing to cry. I really just wanted Azura to stop messing with your makeup, it happened months ago before you were pregnant. I don't even know how she still remembered that. He replied with annoyance. Hey, don't blame her, okay? I scolded, he got up claiming my lips in a passionate kiss not giving me even a moment to breathe. I don't care what you think but you are far from ugly, goddess. Baby girl, you are a miracle right now. He whispered huskily, moving back, and care asterisking my hair. You are carrying our little pups, carrying one child isn't easy and you are here with five. You are still the most breathtaking woman on this planet, and you're mine. My heart melted at his words and suddenly I hugged him turning my body so my stomach that was carrying our babies wasn't in the way. He was right, this moment was special. I just felt so emotional at times. Thanks, Liam. I whispered. He wrapped his arms around me and kissed the top of my head. Not long left and then it's going to be a hell of a lot crazier, but I promise it'll be easier. I'll do my best to take the load off you because right now I can't that. He placed a hand on my stomach and I felt a movement inside. Every time he touched my stomach, and the sparks of the bond coursed through me, the pups would react to his touch. I know you will, and you have been so amazing. Don't think I don't notice you massaging my back or legs when I'm asleep. I said care asterisking his face before kissing him softly. I do appreciate you, blue eyes, even when I'm annoyed and irritated. I know. Now, how about we go back out there and I give you an amazing foot massage after we eat? He suggested. I nodded and he gave me that gorgeous smile of his, lifting me up bridal style and carrying me back out to the living room. Chapter 119 Bonus Chapter Liam That's it, Raven you got this hun. Kiera encouraged, holding her hand, her purple aura swirling around her as Raven breathed steadily, pain contorting her face as she pushed. And again. Almost here, babe, you're doing amazingly. My own heart was racing and seeing her in this much agony was tearing me to shreds inside. She was going to have to do this five times? This wasn't fair. I'm okay. Raven whispered to me, her face scrunched in pain before she pushed once more. I care asterisk sscd her clammy forehead, my other hand holding hers tightly. Her nails dug into my skin, drawing blood, but I wished I could take away the pain she was in. Almost there, Luna. One of the midwives added. We were in Kiara's pack, having spent the last ten days here. Raven let out a scream as she pushed with all her might, and the sound of a cry filled the room. I kissed her forehead as her head dropped back on the pillow, my attention turning to the first of our pups. It's a boy, congratulations. 
the midwife said. A boy. Raven whispered, smiling weakly. He's beautiful. Kiera murmured softly, her eyes like ravens filled with tears of happiness. The nurse brought our little pup over to Raven, despite her wincing as another contraction ripped through her. She kissed our son softly and I quickly gave him a kiss, he was gorgeous, so tiny, and his head was full of black hair. He was taken away and wrapped up in a blanket. My gaze followed him until Kiara told Raven to push once more. The next one is ready to come out, hun you are doing amazingly. She encouraged softly. Raven nodded as she began to push, stopping when Kiara told her to. I'm sorry you are going through this. I whispered, trying to push away the pain in my chest at her agony. She didn't reply, trying to give me a smile, only to bite her lip as pain shot through her. Four more to go. Push Luna, you got this. The midwife encouraged as Kiara held her hand, I know she was waiting for any dip in Raven's stats to heal her. Our hearts were pounding with nerves, and no matter how beautiful this moment was, it was also painful. I didn't like seeing her in such agony. Goddess, please make it easy for her. Liam. Liam. I snapped my gaze to Kiera only to realize my own aura was swirling around me dangerously. Sorry. I said, reining it in as I kissed Raven's forehead brushing her hair back but unable to ignore the tears that streamed out of the corner of her eyes. I brushed them away as she let out a half-scream, half gr 0 and, and then, the sound of another baby crying. I heard Kiera laugh softly. Another gorgeous baby boy. I turned as she brought the baby to us, a head full of light hair. He instantly stopped crying when Raven pressed her lips to his cheek gently. I smiled, reaching over and care asterisking his cheek before he too was taken away. Three more. You got this. I encouraged softly, pressing my lips to hers. She kissed me back weakly, but she still nodded with determination. Another twenty minutes later the cry of our fifth child filled the room. Another boy. Kiera announced. A huge smile on her face as she placed the boy in Raven's arms, kissing her forehead. You did amazing hun, I'm so proud of you. Raven smiled up at her, her eyes glistening with tears. Thank you, for being here with me for the last two days. She said softly. I watched them, glad of the bond they had. My hand never left Raven's head even when she took her hand from mine to hold our youngest son. Always. Kiera replied, I'll get the others over here for you. How you feeling, love? I asked her. Kia's healed me, I just feel exhausted. She replied. Thank the goddess. I whispered, pressing my forehead to hers for a moment. Two for you, Liam. Kiera said, passing me two wrapped up babies. I knew one was the firstborn, but I wasn't sure about the second. They all looked different from one another, yet there were some similarities. I think this one is going to have blue eyes Raven murmured, looking down at the youngest, his hair as dark as Raven's. Can we name him Renji? Her question took me by surprise, but I smiled softly. Yes. She returned my smile with a beautiful one of her own. Thank you. She whispered. We had a few names of both genders, but we did not have five boy names. I don't think either of us thought we'd have five of one gender and Raven had said she wanted mom and dad to choose one name each too. No, thank you for being such an incredible woman and mate. I replied sitting on the bed next to her, as Kiera gave two more babies to her without their blankets so they could get some skin to skin. Seeing Raven with three kids was crazy, and then there were the two in my arms. I can't believe I have five nephews. 
Kiera exclaimed as she came over to me and wrapped her arms around my shoulders. Thanks, Kia. I whispered, kissing her cheek. Anytime, brother. She replied, smiling happily. After a short while, we'll switch skin to skin for these two. Then you can get cleaned up. Mom and Dad are on their way. I nodded, knowing Raven needed her rest too. I'll give you two some time alone and I'll break the news to Alejandro. Kiera added as the midwife took away the towels and sheets that had been placed under Raven. We were soon left alone with our five pups as I sat on the bed next to Raven and she kissed the top of the three boys' heads she was carrying. Can I see them too? She asked. I placed them closer to her and she broke into tears, alarming me. Love. They're so beautiful. She whispered. I wanted to reach over to wipe her tears away, but both my arms were full. Yeah, they are. Is it weird that I can't even imagine having even one less right now? No, I feel the exact same way. I leaned over to kiss her lips. Chuckled. I think we're done though, forever. I never say never. I want a girl too. Raven murmured, her gaze on her pups as my eyes widened in shock. What? I guess she'll change her mind in a few months. We were in a new room, which was a lot bigger and now held five cribs. Mom and Dad had just popped in, and although Raven br 3 est fed each one for a short while, they were all topped up on formula before Raven went to shower, leaving us with the five pups. Five boys, that's something. Dad said, smiling as he held two of our pups. Yeah. I said, smiling down at Renji. Any names? Mom asked. Just this one, he's Renji. Mom and Dad smiled. It's perfect. Mom murmured, softly kissing our firstborn pup on his forehead. Don't worry about how you will manage. Apart from Omega's help, you will have us there too. I can't believe I'm admitting this, but I'm definitely happy to help. Dad added. They're all alphas. I can sense their auras. Well, they are Liam's boys. I think you forget that we made Liam and Kiera. Dad smirked. I actually haven't forgotten that. Making kids mom, dad, I really don't want to hear that. I-G-R-0-A-N-E-D. Mom laughed just as Raven re-entered, looking gorgeous as ever and to my relief, a lot fresher. I got up, instantly placing our pup on the bed, and pulled her into my arms, hugging her tightly. She hugged me back and I bent down to kiss her passionately. She cupped my face, kissing me back. Pleasure coursed through me at her touch, and I won't lie, being able to crush her completely against me without her tummy in the way felt great. I held her tighter, never wanting to let go, but when she needed air, I had to pull away. I love you. I whispered. Love you too, blue eyes. I pressed my forehead to hers, never wanting to let her go. My world. How are you feeling? Raven? Mom asked. Just a little tired, but Kiera has fixed me up perfectly. Raven replied, brushing a strand of her wet locks out of her face. That's good. Mom replied, as Dad smiled at Raven. You looked cute when you were pregnant, like this huge round thing with legs and a head, but I'm glad to see you back to your usual self. Thank you for that description. Uncle, I felt like I had been inflated. Raven pouted. Dad smirked. You kinda were. Raven stuck her tongue out and Dad did the same, displaying his pierced tongue that I often forgot he had. I smiled, looking between them. They had a good bond. Dad stood up and coming over pulled her into his arms, giving her a tight hug. You did amazingly. 
I know how hard twins were to carry for Red and Ray's, yet here you are beating that record with five. He said, giving her his trademark smirk. So, any names for the other four? Not yet, but we wanted you and Mom to choose one. Raven said smiling up at him. I glanced at Mom, seeing the smile on her face and the beat of her heart, I knew it wasn't because she was getting to name one of her grandsons but because of Raven calling her Mom. Something Mom had gently asked her months back but she often still said Auntie. However, the times she'd slip and say Mom, she truly cherished those. Hmm, I'd actually like that. Dad nodded with approval. Which one do I get to name? Any you like. I smiled as Dad walked back to the bed, whilst Mom stared down at the baby she was now holding. Aries. Aries Westwood. She said, her voice thick with emotion. If you like it of course. She already had that one picked out, in hopes she could suggest it to you guys. Dad smirked making mom glare at him. It's perfect. Raven smiled. Jace. Dad stated, picking up our firstborn. The future alpha of the Blood Moon pack. I smiled at Raven who wrapped her arms around me, resting her head against my chest. It's perfect. She replied happily. So we have a Jace Westwood, an Aries Westwood, a Renji Westwood. Two left mom smirked. Goddess five. I think their daddy and Kiara should pick those two. Raven said kissing my chest, as she smiled up at me. Well, I like Theo. I mused. This one's Theo. Just then Kiara entered after a light knock. Right on time. Raven smiled. We want you to name the last one. She motioned towards our last unnamed pup and Kiara's eyes widened in shock. Me? Yes for everything you have done for us. Raven replied softly. I nodded in agreement as Kiara walked over to the little one, picking him up she kissed his forehead, her eyes full of emotion. Carter, if you like it. Absolutely. Raven said smiling at her before looking at me. I gave my nod of approval before kissing her softly. And there we had it, the Westwood Alpha Quintuplets. Chapter 120 Bonus Chapter Robin The Westwood Quintuplets were born eleven days before our little princess. Artemis Luna Nicholson She was beautiful, with grey-blue eyes, black hair and lashes that curled up perfectly. My beautiful little baby girl. She was a good baby who slept well, I often had to wake her up to feed her myself. Damon was the perfect partner to have. He willingly took care of her and me, it never felt like he didn't want to do it or let on that he was tired. Even after a long day of work, he didn't let it affect his care for me or our baby. Being a new alpha, there were many on the council who didn't like it. He was the second non-alpha born to take the title of alpha and it was something he had to prove that he was good at. I know the king didn't like him due to his involvement with Kiera, however, at the council he was fair and just, not letting any of his personal opinions blind his judgment of seeing Damon's capabilities. In fact, he'd even questioned the council as to why Damon wasn't efficient and if they wanted to test his strength to battle it out. Plus. The king had stated that Damon was a better alpha than half of them there. Damon was strong and he had worked hard, plus he was given the title by a powerful alpha, one whose position on the council remained. I knew he would have to constantly prove he was capable, but I had no worries because he was more than capable. As for our little princess, despite her birth making us both so happy, it gave way to more questions and criticism. If Damon was a true alpha, then he would have had a male born first. Of course, this was shut down by the first alpha female herself, Luna Scarlet, stating she was a firstborn and if any alpha wanted to battle it out on the field, 
she was willing to show them what an alpha female was capable of. My little angel was going to be protected by her family and pack. We may be two packs now, but we were still one. Azura, that little princess doted on Artemis and was so happy she had a name starting with A. She also asked Liam why he didn't have any baby girls. And finished by stating that next time Waven should bring five girls. Goddess, I hope not. Raven had gone through so much, it had been so hard to see her with her huge belly knowing I had it so much easier. Today we were having a small get-together at the Westwoods mansion. Raven and Liam had moved in with them, due to having five pups it wasn't really ideal to remain at the cottage, and although they were getting their own place made, they wouldn't be moving there for a few years. I had my little angel dressed in an ivory lace dress, a little matching hairband on her head and she was good to go. I was in a matching ivory color, although mine was a bandage dress with an under B00B cut out. Goddess, these things had grown since I was br 3 est feeding, something I realized Damon didn't mind at all. There's my beautiful girls. Damon's deep voice came coming over and wrapping his strong arms around me as he kissed my neck. You look beautiful, Rin. Thanks. I turned my head, kissing his lips as I tried not to press into his package. Something that we were surprisingly still finding time for despite having a baby. Artemis was three months old now, and I would say we had it easy. I wonder if that would change when she gets older but I'll enjoy whatever I can get. We had now arrived at the Westwood Mansion. Luna Scarlet was wearing a thin-strapped satin red dress, I often thought red hair and red clothes would clash, but she was just someone who could pull it off with perfection, right down to her red lipstick. Raven, on the other hand, looked gorgeous in a two-toned dress I had seen her wear ages ago at her housewarming dinner. It was the dress Liam had gotten for her for their first date. Looking at her you wouldn't think she'd had five kids, guess the werewolf gene helped get us back into shape fast. Hey guys, come on in. She said as she met us both. Damon gave her a hug and kiss, I am proud to say I never felt jealous of their bond. He was mine regardless of the past. The house was a bustle, Zach and Taylor were having a moment. They were a couple, and well Taylor, who doesn't love him. He actually admitted I scared him a little, to begin with, but now we were good friends. Liam's new Delta was here, one I still held a teeny grudge against for taking my place, although I realized it was because I was meant to be Luna. Monica and Channing were together, and I am happy that Anna left the Blood Moon pack when she met someone then a few weeks later Channing's mark vanished. Monica actually got a tattoo of Damon's dad's mark done on her collarbone before Channing marked her. So her two mates' marks were not far from one another. I'm happy for her because she deserved every ounce of happiness she could possibly get. She was great with Artemis too. After hugging Rick, I stepped away from everyone greeting each other and looked at the five little Westwood princes who were laid out on the floor on a large playmat, with several thick blankets placed beneath them. They were absolutely adorable, Jace, the eldest, had black hair and green eyes, whilst Theo, the second one, had blonde hair with blue eyes. Then there was Ares, he had a darker shade of blonde hair with hazel eyes. Carter had hair the exact shade of Alpha Elijah's, with green eyes, and then there was Renji, with his black hair and blue eyes. Each one looked different and each one had a different personality. Jace was the most demanding and got angry quickly, whilst Renji was the gentlest and softest. Theo was the type to smile and baby talk when you called him. I planted a kiss on each of their foreheads just as Azura came rushing over. Wabin. I wear the same color as Artemis. Yes you are and you look stunning. Said giving her a hug. I want a picture with her. We will surely get a picture. I promise, stroking Theo's hair. 
Raven came over, holding my little princess, and knelt down next to me. Goddess, she is breathtaking. She complimented softly. I smiled, as I looked around. Life's great, right? I whispered to Raven. Her eyes sparkled as she nodded. It sure is. She replied, placing Artemis in the middle between Theo and Ares. The future of our Pax, our legacies. Come on, let's get a mocktail. Raven offered, taking my hands as she tugged me up. Once upon a time, I didn't really have friends or anything, and now I had family, friends, the love of my life, and my baby girl. I don't trust her with them. Damon said, staring down at the five boys who were as innocent as babies could be. Damon. I scolded while Raven giggled. Oh, you should be worried. She's too adorable to be ignored. She teased as Liam shook his head, frowning deeply. I hope they're nothing like their granddad. He mumbled. Ah. The original Alpha was known for his playboy ways. Well, I would make sure my girl was a queen who took no crap from anyone. Liam quickly picked her up as if worried his boys would attack her, making the rest of us burst out laughing. Don't worry little one, Uncle Liam's got your back. Bonus Chapter The End Bonus Chapter Liam Damon, watch it. I growled as he kicked the thermos over. Yes, it was closed, but it fell making a loud sound that made Theo, who had just fallen asleep, wake up with a start. Guys, can you two not even mind six pups? Zack asked, raising an eyebrow as he stepped into Damon's lounge from the kitchen area eating a sandwich. Make yourself useful and feed Carter. He raised an eyebrow. I don't know how. Damon, who was currently rocking Artemis and Ares, raised an eyebrow. Seriously, Zack. Zack simply smirked, dropping onto the sofa. I'm only here because Tay said to help you too, but I have no clue about kids. He switched the TV on, only for the volume to disturb the two pups who were sleeping on the sofa. Jace became completely fresh as he stared around him. Our mates had gone for a spa day out and here we were with these six plus Azura. Help me, goddess. Man, just go, I feel like kicking your ass. Damon growled. Zack smirked, I knew he could see we were stressed out. Just think, this is what your mates deal with. Hey, we help a lot, just not used to doing this alone. I shot back. Has Raven been with them alone? He asked me as I tried to rein in my alpha aura. Yeah. My point exactly. Zack replied. Taylor loves kids. Damon said you suddenly, what will do because I'm sure he'll want one? Zack shrugged munching on his sandwich as I finally managed to make Theo fall back to sleep. That's for when the time comes, not right now and we probably adopt I guess. Not planning to use your own SP3RM in a surrogate? I asked surprised. N.A., I'm good without, I think there's plenty of orphan kids who could use a good home. Zack said, and I almost forgot about his C0CKY attitude from moments earlier. That's true. I said quietly. Something stinks. Zack scrunched his nose, me and Damon exchanged looks. For s sake, don't tell me one of these lots has done a sh, t. I swear the amount of diapers they go through is so much. It's diapers day in and day out. It's not these two. Damon replied with relief. Oh. I glanced around, realizing the smell was coming from Jace, he stared back at me with a look that I swear was saying serves you right dad. Diaper duties, hey? Zack smirked. Where are the Omegas? Well, 
they would be here if Damon didn't say that minding kids wasn't too hard and then your mate suggested we mind them. I growled. So Damon should change the diaper. Zack offered. Hell no, your pup. Damon replied. Besides, I've only changed Artemis. Aren't boys like, harder? What the man? You're a guy. Zack replied. Yeah, well his sh, t's going to be all over. I sighed listening to them both. Azura came over, holding out a diaper and wipes. Here we am, now change JC Wacy's nappy. She commanded. Was I really the Alpha? I was not as so viking sure anymore. Changing a diaper doesn't make me any less of an Alpha, but I hated this job. We sat down on the ground and I placed Jace on the changing mat and then undid the nappy. Raven, I need you, or Mom. Why wasn't Mom here? We am, what's that? Azura asked, pointing at Jace's bits. I narrowed my eyes, I'm sure she asked Raven and Mom the same question. What they replied though, I have no clue. It's just something wrong with him. I said, making Zack and Damon look at me like I was a fool. But what the did they expect me to explain to Azura about Guy Bits? Oh no, Jace has something wrong with him. Don't be so dramatic. Didn't you ask Mom and Raven? What did they say? I asked, flinching as I grabbed several wipes, Mama said it's because he's a boy. Boys are so strange. Why do they have an extra toe there? A toe. I'm dead. Zack snickered. They just do. The goddess made them like that. I replied. Why was I having this conversation with my sister? Oh dear. The goddess made boys so ugly. We am, do you have an extra toe there? The boys cackled like hags, and I glared at them. No, I don't. I have way more than a thumb. But Damon and Zack do. Oh, so are you a girl then, Liam? That backfired. The boys couldn't stop their snickering as I glared at Azura before looking away not wanting to make her cry. I'm not a girl. Then you have a toe? Azura persisted. I swear she knew she was messing with M. Yes, I have a toe. I gave in, displeased. Now did Mama not teach you not to talk about things like that? Oh no, Mama said it's good to talk about everything. Azura nodded fervently. Yeah Liam, it's good to talk about everything. Damon smirked Jace has an ugly toe. She shook her head as I closed the diaper. Next time, knock hanging diapers in front of her. Why did mom entertain her? Chill out, dude you're sold school. Zack smirked as I dunked Jace in his arms and went to soap my hands. Kids sure were gross, we yam is very old school. Azura agreed. Do you even know what that means, Pumpkin? I asked, drying my hands and returning to the lounge area. It was a tip. How the did it get messy when these kids can't even walk yet? I don't know. Azura shrugged, raising her hands before kissing Theo, who was meant to stay asleep. Azura, let him sleep. Come on, Pumpkin. I almost begged. He's awake now, we am. Obviously, you just woke him up. Zack, why and you leave that empty can there? I growled, spotting the one on the table. He's worse than a woman. Zack remarked as Damon snickered, slowly trying to lower Artemis into her Moses basket. She just puked. He gr 0 a n e d. S.H., T., didn't you burp her? Zack asked, grabbing a wipe. I looked at them frowning as Damon just wiped her up, it was a lot. She needs changing. I can change her man. Damon complained. 
I sighed, you can't leave a kid with sick on their clothes. That's gross. I'll do it. And that was how I ended up having to change the little doll. She seemed more fragile than the boys but she sure was a fat little thing with leg and arm rolls. She was cute. She had been bigger at birth, but now the boys were definitely bigger once she was all dressed, I began cleaning the lounge, putting both Damon and Zack on feeding duties. I swear if this place stayed a mess and Robin saw it, she'd cry. Two hours, six diapers, and three vomit projectiles later, the pups were all asleep, whilst Azura was watching Ben and Holly on TV. I dropped onto the sofa with a mug of coffee. You're pretty good at this. Damon remarked. He is, I guess three months of minding five helps. Zack agreed. I don't think we'll ever become pros, but our mates went through hell and back to birth them, they gave up a lot and carried them for the entire pregnancy, the least we can do is let them have a getaway and know that the house won't be amiss and that the pups are clean fed and safe in their absence. I said, gulping down my coffee and placing my mug down before closing my eyes. Good point. Damon agreed. I think it's okay if I shut my eyes for a few moments. The moment I was about to doze off Jace's loud cry erupted in the air, and like a domino effect, every single pup began crying. I opened my eyes, exhaling deeply as both Zack and Damon got up, grabbing two pups each. I got up, picking up the last two. Here we go again. Just an hour left. Raven we need to do this again. I commented, feeling so good after that massage. Oh definitely, those facials were the best. Taylor said brushing his finger along his cheek. I just hope we can. The men didn't even complain. Robin added, uncertain as she passed me the pizzas. I'm sure that's because they didn't want to worry us. I replied as Robin unlocked her apartment door. I was a little scared too what were we going to see inside? Was it going to be a mess? I peered around the pizza boxes as Taylor held the drinks and paper bags, Robin took a few boxes from me as we all stared inside. To our shock, the place was sparkling, the light aroma of oils from the diffuser scented the air. The place was spotless and each man held one baby whilst three were playing on the carpet, with Azura set coloring. Wow! Robin said, she was the first to speak and I felt sorry for her knowing that she had been the most worried. Babe! Damon was up and came over pulling her into his arms and kissing her hard as she tried to balance the boxes she was holding. Placed the pizza boxes on the kitchen worktop as Liam slowly placed Renji down and came over to me, lifting me off my feet and kissing me passionately. Baby! I exclaimed through the link, my core throbbing as his tongue slipped into my mouth. I am zero aned against his lips trying to suppress it failing as I tangled my hand into my handsome man's hair and I kissed him back harder. Oh, goddess! I missed you, love. I missed you too. I whispered when we broke apart, praying no one could smell how turned on I was right now. So, we got pizzas and it seems you boys managed the kids perfectly. Taylor remarked, as he broke away from Zack. By the way, babe, you looked gorgeous holding a kid. Zack simply raised an eyebrow, I don't think he was ready to be a dad yet but when they were ready, I'm sure they were going to be amazing parents. Well as the kids are settled, shall we eat? Robin suggested. But I'm surprised the place is clean. Thank Liam for that, he is a clean freak. It's a good thing. Both Liam and Robin said at the same time, they smiled at each other as I walked over to greet the kitties. Our perfect life. Or if you want to pay for more such audiobooks, you can send us a request in a private Facebook group, or join us on WhatsApp, a link is given in the video description. The rest of the audiobooks will be uploaded in the next episode, 
join us on Patreon to listen to more unlimited audiobooks.